Hi, in today's video I'm going to be talking to you about different types of SharePoint online sites. There's going to be a couple of different PowerPoints I'm going to use, um, but as I'm kind of going through I'm also going to be showing live examples of SharePoint sites. So let's take a look. So there's actually three different types of SharePoint online sites. And the first one to talk about is team sites. Now this is the one that most people seem to create um, when left to their own devices. Um, now on team sites, they can actually be uh, both accessed through SharePoint Online as well as potentially Microsoft Teams as in the communication uh, tool. Now not every SharePoint team site will be connected to a Microsoft Team, but every Microsoft Team that you create will automatically create a SharePoint team site. Now the team sites are generically used for kind of storage of day-to-day -day kind of files, especially if you're using them for Microsoft Teams and collaborating with your team members. But you can also create news and pages all related to that particular team that you're working with, storing useful links. And team sites have their own navigation across the left-hand page. And actually, it's one way that you can quickly identify a SharePoint team site. It's that the navigation bar is on the left-hand side. The other two sites that we're going to be talking about, they have a navigation bar across the top instead. Usually, there's one team site per department. So, for example, like a marketing team, sales team, IT team, and that's what you can tend to expect to see. But as I say, this is what a SharePoint team site would look like for access via SharePoint. But often it would have a Microsoft team associated to it as well. So potentially you could be accessing it through the SharePoint interface or you might go into Microsoft Teams and you might have embedded that SharePoint page directly into your Microsoft team. Now, the next type of SharePoint Online site to discuss is a communication site. Now, a communication site is all about this sort of, um, well, it's actually a replacement for what they used to call publishing sites, which I thought was quite a good term because it's all about publishing content to the wide organization. Now, again, not every department would necessarily have a communication site, but you would have a sort of team area for your day-to-day -day file sharing and things like that and collaboration. And then you'd have a communication site for services and information that you're offering to the wider organization. So say, for example, like a finance department might be giving out information about expenses or HR giving policy information, for example. It's all about communicating information to the wider company. It provides a single source of truth for policies, forms, marketing materials, things like that. And it's in no way associated to a Microsoft team. So a communication site is a completely standalone thing. An example of a SharePoint Online communication site would be like this crisis management portal where, especially during the times of like COVID pandemic, um, these were commonly used for people to share information um, and kind of give the latest updates about what's going on. So this might be sort of frequent asked questions, links to useful resources as well as contacts, uh, company-wide policies and news, upcoming events, and all of that sort of stuff tied directly into the communication site. So typically a communication site is not just for um, one particular department to own. It's typically got a purpose that it's giving information to the wider kind of business. Or organization. Another great example of a communication site is maybe something like CEO messages or um, messages from the management team or something like that. Typically it's sort of about giving information from the, the um, senior leadership team to the rest of the organization. Again, this might be around missions and goals, a little information about the actual leadership or the new sort of CEO. You might want to embed things like Yammer feeds for posts and uh, questions and surveys and things like that, maybe upcoming events, links off to other kind of leaders profile pages, maybe Delve pages, as well as news and things like that, which is coming from the leadership team. So that's SharePoint communication sites. Then the third and final site is what we call a SharePoint hub site. Now, a SharePoint hub site is actually typically a communication site that's then been sort of elevated into this hub site uh, status. Now. Anyone who's used SharePoint from a sort of legacy, maybe or even SharePoint on-premise kind of old days, um, you'll know the concept of what we call SharePoint subsites, where typically you'd have one SharePoint site, like a homepage of an intranet, and then you'd have subsites which sit underneath it. So maybe a hub site, uh, sorry, a subsite per department, like a subsite for HR, subsite for IT, things like that. 
And subsites could have had subsites underneath them. The only problem with that is you, you make this fixed kind of pathway of where a site lives, and it can never relocate from that. So to get around using these kind of subsites, Microsoft have created this concept of a hub site, which is basically where you can create a single kind of hub site, and then you have instead of subsites underneath that you have sites associated to that so for example you'd have this hub site and then you might have like a finance site which is connected and linked and you've got all these kind of island sites linked together so that means if you ever did want to create a different site or a different association between the different sites you can easily move them around by the different links rather than being fixed in one place so the sites can easily associate to a, to a different hub and they're no longer locked to a parent site um, in that same breath, though, I would say most small to medium sized businesses would typically have one hub site. Um, so you would have your kind of homepage to hub site, and then you might have different communication sites for the different departments that then link into that. Um, now, large enterprises may have multiple, though. So a larger business might have, say, a hub site for different regions of the world because it's totally different content, different things they want to put onto the homepages and things like that. Now, the purpose of having a, a, a hub site is that it can do things like make sure that the permissions are properly inherited to all the other sites. So with the kind of traditional approach of having subsites, you would specify the permissions at the top site, and they would then trickle down to all the subsites until you told it to do something different. Um, and that same feature basically is available using uh, hub sites. So you can set up a hub site, and then if you choose to, you can inherit those same permissions to the sites which have been inherited to that. Also branding. So say, for example, if your company call is blue and you want that to run throughout all of your company, you can set the theme once at the hub site layer and then any sites which are associated to that hub site will inherit that branding as well as a hub navigation bar. So we're going to take a look at a hub site in a moment, but the navigation bar across the top of a hub site will keep it consistent, meaning it'll look the same um, everywhere within the internet. It can also roll up things like news articles, documents and activity. So let's take a quick look at a hub site. So here's an example of a SharePoint hub site. It's a communication site, which has then been elevated to this hub site status. So the first thing we can see across the top is we do have this hub site um, navigation bar across the top, which as I say, it will be consistent when you move between the different areas of the internet. It will always be the same across the top. Whereas this, say, site navigation on a SharePoint site is specific to the current site you're looking at. But typical then hub kind of features would be things like slideshows of news articles, quick links um, to help you navigate to areas. So this particular template is quite a modern, very trendy kind of looking thing, which has got news scrolling across the top, which you link out to internal news, external news. But also we want some useful links to key things that people want to access, things like raising support tickets, training videos, expense requests, leave requests, things like that. We can also have some buttons, so it might be things like linking to policies, materials, forms, things like that. Maybe it's a mission statement or an overall kind of overarching um, message that you want to get over to your employees within your internet. You can have news articles pulling through here, and again, they can be internal, they can be external. Upcoming events, training, webinars, events, parties, things like that that you might want people to attend. And they can choose to add them into their own calendar by clicking these little buttons here. Then on the right hand side, I say we've got some quick links, some useful links, but we've also got things like charts that we can put onto here, um, as well as latest tweets um, and embedding videos from either YouTube or stream or other kind of media platforms. So this is just an example of a hub site. You can change the look and feel. It doesn't have to look exactly like this. You'll find tons of different examples of what hub sites could potentially look like. But the main kind of purpose is they're typically the starting point of an internet, the home page, which is rolling up things like news, events, and all this type of content from all of the kind of department areas or other communication sites, which could be potentially feeding up into that. I hope you found that video useful, explaining all the different types of SharePoint online sites. If you've got any questions, feel free to post them below. Please like and subscribe to the channel as it really helps. And there'll be plenty more content like this along the way. Thank you.